Hi. Welcome to the last of uh, five minute physics, uh, for at least for this period. Um, and uh, today I promised I would talk to you about the two most important legacies that physics and science in particular have, have given humanity. And so let me talk about them in this uh, beautiful environment I'm lucky enough to be in right now. The first is nonsense. Science has allowed us to unambiguously define what we mean by nonsense. That which disagrees with empirical evidence. If you have a theory and it makes predictions that disagree with evidence, it's nonsense, regardless of how elegant or beautiful it may seem. We throw it out like yesterday's newspaper. If you make claims that disagree with evidence, they're nonsense. The Earth isn't 6,000 years old. The Earth isn't flat. You shouldn't drink bleach or disinfectant. As trite as all, all that sounds, it's incredibly important because, first of all, in science, that's what allows us to make scientific progress. We don't have to have endless arguments about how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. When something has been shown to be empirical, empirically nonsense, we throw it out and we move forward. And it's that ability to put behind us what's important. Science can never some prove something to be absolutely true, but it can prove things to be absolutely false. And that's important, as I've written before, because it's like Sherlock Holmes, when you throw away all the stuff that is wrong, what you're left with may be right, and you move forward. So the idea of, 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 of proving things wrong is a central part of science. And it's a central part, not just of science, but the way we should determine information about the world. And I think it's incredibly important that we more accurately in this modern world train people to understand how to determine what's nonsense. The internet has been a boon. We Many of us thought it would be a great boon for providing information in, about the world, and it is, but it also provides an equal amount of mis misinformation. And I said this before, but I think it's incredibly important that we make as a central part of training of the education of students, not a bunch of facts, but the ability to distinguish sense from nonsense, because that will allow us them to uh, people to look at what's on the internet and other places, and to, and separate the wheat from the chaff, to use the techniques that science has used to separate nonsense from sense, to constantly test your ideas against evidence, retest them, to seek out multiple sources, to when when a claim is made to compare it to things you already know to be true and say, is it consistent with that? To not live in an echo chamber to present your ideas for, for critical analysis and to give other people's ideas critical analysis, as scientists do when they submit papers uh, for the world. So that, I think, is probably the most important legacy of, of science that, for humanity, is that to have rational policy and rational living, we have to be willing to throw out ideas even if we love them if they disagree with experiment. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing, that's in, the second incredibly important legacy, is uncertainty. Uncertainty is often viewed to be a bug, but it's said it's really a feature. Uncertainty in, in much of everyday life is viewed as a bad thing. Politicians never want to say, I think, or maybe. Media people don't. Often when I've been interviewed by journalists and I say it's highly likely that this, they want to write saying, this is the case. And I say, no, don't say this is the case. It's likely to be the case. Because the great thing about science is we've been able to quantify uncertainty. And that tells us how reliable our results are. If we give a result that's, that's, uh, that we say the uncertainty in this result after we've analyzed all the options uh, is, is, is less than 1%, it tells you it's highly likely. If it say it's 30%, it tells you it's not highly likely. And that's, that's really important because if someone makes a claim to you, and in some sense a claim about the empirical world, and they can't tell you the uncertainty in that claim, you should be suspicious. The, the fact that we can recognize that, that, as I said before, science never proves something to be absolutely true, but only highly likely or highly unlikely is incredibly important. And the fact that we can claim that we have an uncertainty means we've analyzed the likelihood that, w that we're wrong. That, as Feynman said, we try and prove ourselves wrong as often as we prove ourselves right. When we do an experiment, we try to think of all the reasons why it might be wrong, and we explore them and put, try and put a quantitative figure on how likely it is that this result is an accident or systematically uh, uh, wrong or, or, or wrong for other reasons. And all of us 
when I think in, in, in our daily lives should be looking around and recognizing that when we're absolutely certain about something, we should recognize what the uncertainties are in that. And as I say, particularly when you listen to claims that are made now uh, in the modern world about the pandemic, you ask, what's the uncertainty of those claims? Epidemiology is much less certain than physics. And uh, that's one of the problems. Scientists are working very, very hard during the pandemic, but the, but the data uh, the ability to separate signal from noise is much much more difficult to do and that means there's much more systematic uncertainty and so you should recognize that when claims are made and ask what those uncertainties are certain things are known very very well if the data sets are very large and the and the experimental uh, setup is very is, is very good but nonsense and uncertainty are what allow science to move forward because when 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 a scientist makes a claim for an experiment that with an uncertainty of 95%, nowadays in particle physics we say, well, that's not enough to be able to make a, a, a to be able to state with with great accuracy that it's really true, and we don't build our theories based on that evidence. When something is is measured to, with an accuracy of 99.99995%, we're more likely, let's say, like the Higgs boson, we're more likely than to use it as the basis of future theories. So we base our theories and our actions on the on the level of uncertainty which can be quoted quantitatively and the fact that science can quote its uncertainties quantitatively and recognize that every observation comes with an uncertainty is a hallmark and one of the greatest powers of science which I say would be useful in our everyday lives and should be particularly useful now when you read the news or listen to politicians claims or anyone else's claims, scientists claims about the likelihood of a vaccine or anything else. So those are the last two things I wanted to leave you with and um, I hope they're useful and I hope this whole series has been useful for you. It's been a privilege for me truly to be able to reach out to you and a pleasure to hear back from so many of you with your comments and requests and I feel lucky to have been able to do it and to be able to, to provide maybe some, some respite each day from, from the social isolation we're experiencing and maybe allow you to get away from the bad news and, and think about the universe in a new way. But it's worked for me too, and I want to thank you for that. This has been a chance for me every day to move away from those same things and think of some um, arguments of something exciting and some ideas that may be fun to talk about. So it's been a pleasure, and, uh, and I feel fortunate to be able to do it, and I hope, uh, I hope that you've been able to enjoy it as well and maybe continue to enjoy it. Um, meanwhile, I, uh, I move on to other things right now, uh, and you'll have a chance to, for those of you who... Uh, who want to see me talk about other things um, on our Origins podcast. We'll continue that, our Origins Foundation events, and I hope to be on a, other, other uh, I already have agreements to do, you know, to do some other YouTube uh, talks with people. So I'll be, I'll be out there, and, um, and uh, you, all of you, I hope uh, you stay safe and stay healthy. And, uh, and thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.